Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the webinar. I am Daniel and this is DTV. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about the 30 things that you must know before PCS into Germany with the US military. So let's not waste any time, let's get started. Wait a minute, why don't we throw on some German music to get you in the spirit of moving here. <laughs> Okay, a quick background on me. My name is Daniel. I am an Air Force veteran. You can call me DT. I am a military spouse now, living in Germany with my wife since 2014. Uh, and as you probably are aware, I am a content creator. If you've gone down the rabbit hole, you have noticed that I create content on three specific things, PCS prep, travel, and local life as an American living here in Germany. And my biggest goal is to be the number one online resource for PCS prep in Germany. And we are on our way, aren't we? So who is this for? Okay. So so obviously this is for active duty, uh, civilian contractors, GS employees, anyone who is specifically PCSing over to Germany through the US military. It's also for those people that may feel some of those emojis. Maybe you were confused, maybe you're surprised about some of the things you have to do, you're just upset. Uh, you know, you're going through all the emotions at this point in time. So I am here to help you. This is gonna be a high level overview. So these are gonna be all the things that you must know. This blog post was actually the most popular blog post that I had all year last year. And so I decided to just turn this thing into a webinar because there is a ton of information that is just packed into it and it can be a huge spider web um, of information and where everything just connects to each other. So I felt it's just probably the, the best way to get this out is to actually explain it to you um, one page at a time. So this is also a living document. I will continue to update this as we move on in the year. And also to note, the rules are always changing. So if you've spent some time in the military, you understand that rules are always changing online, rules are always changing within the government. And so uh, we'll continue to try to update this as much as possible. All right, my last three tips before we get into this. Number one, yes, this is death by PowerPoint. However, if you're tired of listening to me and you want to go to a specific section within the 30 things, just go to the chapters in the description and listen to what's important to you. Number two, to complement this webinar, I would highly suggest getting one of my checklists. The free one will get the ball rolling for you, but the ultimate checklist has literally been proven by thousands of incoming military families at this point in time. It's legit, trust me. And it's not that expensive. We're talking less than two bottles of wine. Fun fact, drinking wine with the checklist makes it way more fun. Okay, and number three, this webinar is obviously free for you on YouTube and I've put some serious time into making this useful for you. However, if you want the webinar slides, you can purchase that for only $10 in my store. I take that back. You actually have the option to pay what you want for the slides. The minimum is just $10. And within that PDF document, you'll be able to click on some of the highlighted text for external resources. It also takes you to some of my blogs. It takes you to a lot of my videos that correspond with the information that's on the actual slide. So if this channel has brought you value or sparked joy in your life, then feel free to donate more to the movement link in the description. Okay, here's an overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. As I already stated, it's the 30 things you must know before PCS into Germany with the US military, and those 30 things are over there to your right. Everything that is in red, the first five, those are the most expensive and the most important, so we're gonna knock those ones out first. Number one, expectations. You need to understand that there is a lot to do in a short amount of time. Maybe you've already realized that at this point in time, but once you actually settle in and the dust clears, I promise you Germany is a fantastic assignment. I've been to almost every single base around here in Germany since 2014, and I will say that every single base, whether it's big or small, middle or nowhere, Every base has its own unique characteristics about it that make it special. Uh, we'll get more into that as the uh, presentation continues, but I also wanna let you know that you are not alone in this process. There's an entire community out there that's willing to help you and they've been in your same shoes before. So this is nothing new. Uh, so don't be afraid to lean on the community. Um, as I already stated, we're going over the most important expensive items first. Um, that'll be orders, command sponsorship, EFMP, passports, and pets. Everything else that you will see doesn't come in a particular order, so keep that in mind. And I also wanna let you know that all I'm gonna give you here are just honest expectations, and I think that's really just gonna set the tone. Um, you know, the reason I started this whole thing back in 2014, there was literally nothing online, so I had no expectations 
um, there was no tone to be set because I had just no idea what I was getting myself into. And so I wanted to change that. And so my job is to set the expectations for you no matter what base you're going to over here in Germany. Okay, orders and command sponsorship. So this is very, very important here. Hard orders are the golden ticket to getting to Germany. Um, now, EFMP does come first and that's branch specific. Most of the branches you're gonna need to do EFMP first and we'll get into that, that's next. Um, and I think, I believe the Navy receives their orders first. Um, and then they do EFMP, it's a little bit backwards, but most of you guys will have to do the EFMP part first. But I wanna bring up orders and command sponsorship because this is how you receive all of your benefits in Germany. There are a ton of great benefits for living overseas in Germany. So if you're accompanied with dependents, uh, your dependents also need to be command sponsored and on your orders. So all those different benefits that I was talking about, I've listed a ton of them down there, um, but that's basically all of your moving expenses, temporary lodging, household good shipment, your employment on base, tuition free schooling on base, your passports, your SOFA status. We can do this all day. There are so many benefits to have while you're here in Germany. Applying for your ID card, that is pretty self explanatory. You just go to Deers and you need to apply for your ID card. No orders, no problem. While you're waiting for your orders or for your EFMP, uh, there's quite a bit of things that you could be looking at to do. Uh, the first thing I would start thinking about is starting a savings plan. Moving costs money, especially if you're a civilian because of the TCJA, which means that you'll be taxed on a lot of the items related to your OCONUS PCS move, such as the in route travel, the lodging, meals, transportation, household goods shipment, your POV shipment. So I would start a monthly savings plan. Uh, because there's a lot of things that are not reimbursable. That also goes for active duty as well. So for example, when you come over here and you need a rental car, uh, rental cars are not reimbursable. Uh, all your pet shipping, it's none of that. The crate, the shipment of the actual pet isn't a reimbursable. So there's gonna be a lot of moving expenses that you need to start saving for and planning for that. Okay, work on the first part of your EFMP with soft orders. This is an Air Force thing only. It's called the Accelerated Orders Initiative and basically, uh, through the, with the Air Force, you have your basic orders for all airmen and you have amended orders for accompanied folks, right? So while you have the soft orders in your hand and you're waiting for the other orders to, to drop, there's a lot of things that you can take care of. You can do your SIP passport, which is your no fee and your official passports. You can schedule your POV shipment. You can schedule your household goods. You can get airline tickets. However, do not ship your HHG or cars before your EFMP is cleared and you have hard orders in your hand. You don't want to ship all your stuff away before you actually have the orders and EFMP is cleared, but you can schedule things. These are all scheduling items, okay? Know your benefits. There's a lot of benefits that you can educate yourself and research on while you're waiting for your orders to drop, like TLE. You get TLE while in route from your CONUS location to your OCONUS location. And basically this is just partial reimbursement for lodging and meal expenses. Once you actually get OCONUS, then you have TLA benefits that start. But you want to request this with finance before you start your PCS. Very important. Okay, some of the other things. Working on PCSing your pet. If you have a pet, there are a ton of things that you can already be doing right now. Getting the pet shots, getting the chips, uh, getting the right kennel, measuring your pet, getting the health certificate, getting a pet slot, etc., etc. We'll get into the pets here soon, uh, but you can start that without orders, no problem. And then lastly, I put applying for your tourist fee passport and filling out the initial paperwork for your SIP passports. You can do that uh, without orders as well. EFMP, this is a beast, exceptional family member program. Now, as you saw on the last slide, you probably should have already initiated that um, and then started to work on other things before your orders are gonna drop, but just to know what EFMP is, this is a mandatory enrollment for active duty. Uh, civilians are not re required to enroll, but are definitely encouraged to, especially if you have family members that are coming over uh, that may have some uh, special medical um, needs or special education needs uh, that the government may not be able to provide once you're over there. Yeah, so there are limited resources overseas, medical and educational. So they require you to do a screening to look for physical, emotional, developmental, or intellectual disorders requiring specialized services. If they find any of those medical or mental health or educational issues, those uh, concerns will be considered in the assignment process. So keep that in mind. Now, this is a long and painful process and it has been for a very long time. So start this immediately and stay on it. Like I've already said, the Air Force has a two-part system. So they're actually speeding things up. 
especially those folks that are coming over here unaccompanied. Um, but just keep in mind, no one is looking out for you but you. So stay on top of this paperwork and make sure that you and your family members are taken care of uh, on the medical and the educational side. While you're waiting for all that stuff, remember to go back to that what to do while waiting for your orders list that I talked about in the previous slide. Passports and visa. This is a big one. A lot of questions about this one. There are three main types of passports. There is the blue tourist fee passport. This is basically for everyone, even infants. It's good for 90 days within a 180 day period, which is the Schengen rule. Germany is one of the countries within that Schengen rule. And then you have the special issuance passports, the SIP, if you will. The red official passport, which is most commonly for civilians. I have one of those. And then the blue no fee passport. And this is for active duty dependents. Now, keep in mind, when you first PCS over here, active duty folks can PCS with orders and the military ID. But I would apply for all of these passports because you're going to need them eventually, especially if you're going to be traveling from country to country. You're definitely going to need that blue tourist fee passport. So at a very minimum, once again, active duty, you can PCS over here with your orders and military ID and dependents, active duty dependents need to come over here with the blue no fee passport. And as you can see, the official guidance is that if you cannot obtain your SIP passport prior to departure, the use of a regular blue tourist passport in lieu of the SIP is now permissible for travel. So keep that in mind when you're coming over here initially. Okay, the status of forces agreement, aka SOFA, this is actually a stamp or a card that goes into the SIP passports. And this provides all the legal basis and status and special benefits that we have as Americans uh, living over here in Germany. It's basically our visa to live here, come and go as we please, uh, and, and enables all those different benefits underneath the command sponsorship. Um, I've listed some of them down below, unrestricted entry and exit, uh, import export laws, um, exemption from paying German income tax, our driving privileges, uh, tax-free goods and services like gas and et cetera, et cetera. But you need the SOFA status as well as the passport um, to be eligible for all of these entitlements. Hey, and do not forget to click on some of the links that are on these slides. So for example, if you click on number four, passports and visa, that'll take you to all of my external links and my videos about passports and SOFA status. And it also gives you the links that will actually get you started on applying for these different visas and um, the, the different services that I'm talking about. Okay, last hot item, PCSing with pets. This is a big one and it could be the most expensive item if you're not flying with Patriot Express. Uh, so as I've already stated, pet travel expenses are not reimbursed. Most German bases um, are only a two pet max, unless you have an ETP, which is an exception to policy. Um, but there are pet categories and pet requirements, uh, shots, chip, health certificate that you have to have within a specific amount of days of flying. You need a very specific crate to move your pets um, in, in the plane. And speaking of plane, there are different pet slots. You can have pet slots for the Patriot Express, which is the cheapest, commercial airline, and then uh, pet shippers. And I actually recommend Feathers and Fur Express uh, to ship your pet. They have a lot of different options that you can choose from. They'll actually pick up your pet from your home, take it to the airport. It will, uh, they'll pick it. They have people over here in Germany that will pick them up from the airport and take them to your next destination. So there's a lot of different options and add-ons that you can do with pet shippers. Check out Feathers and Fur Express. I actually have a video all about uh, their company as well as a testimonial from a spouse that actually used them. Oh, and they have great military discounts, whether you're active duty or civilian. So again, check them out. Okay, and then if you're going commercial, you want to check with the airline restrictions. There's always um, different rules and restrictions that you need to be aware of for specific commercial airlines like heat embargoes, uh, snub nose animals. There's some restrictions on snub nose animals with some airlines. Uh, cabin versus cargo, which um, pet can go in cabin versus cargo. The emotional support or service pets etc etc also if you're going commercial airline you might as well use my friends at us flights 24 they are a great resource for military discounted airfare they'll also give you 30 euro off your first booking if you mention dtv i'll leave the uh, links all in the slides so that you can take a look at the uh, company and uh, check out their reviews and see what they have to offer now this topic can be a little complicated so again i want to reiterate that you should go check out these external links check out my blogs with a a lot more information on how to get your pet over here. Uh, you don't want to leave your fur baby behind and make sure to check out all the different options you have when flying over here with the pet. Okay, 
PCSing with kids, specifically school and child care information here. So, uh, first of all, there are a couple ways that your kids can go to school. You have most people will go on the on-base DoD uh, Dodds Dodea school and the CDCs. Uh, there are four different categories with the combination of space required, space available, tuition free, tuition paying. If you're a civilian contractor, you need to know if your contract includes tuition free school for your kids on base. Otherwise, you're looking at about 25K per student per year. And ain't nobody got time or money for that. So take a look into that for sure. You wanna make sure to provide all your enrollment records, educational, disciplinary, special needs. I have all those external links on number six, PCS with Kids. So just click on that and it'll take you to all the videos of Dodea schools as well as the links uh, to enrollment and all the other things I'm gonna be talking about here. The CDC, that is the Child Development Center and there is always a waiting list. The low ranking active duty have priority. That's six weeks to five years old. That's preschool we're talking about here. But as soon as you know that you're going to a base and you have orders, I would give them a call and try to get on the waiting list ASAP. Okay, other school options. You have private international schools. These are found all over Germany. They're not as popular as the Dodea schools. Um, but if you're stationed in Garmisch, for example, this is mandatory for kids grades 9 through 12. They'll actually bus kids over to an international school. You also have host nation schools, which is the German schools, a little bit more difficult to get into. Uh, and then you also have homeschooling that you can uh, do as well. Okay, after school program, you have child youth sports. That's called CYS. And this is very dependent on where you're located. Uh, it depends on how many participants you have in that area. Uh, how many volunteers and coaches, um, but there are several programs under CYS in all of the locations around Germany. At a minimum though, in high school, as far as sports go, you can for sure bet on football, basketball, wrestling, cross country, tennis, volleyball, soccer, baseball, et cetera, et cetera. You can read that. Each base also has a teen center for kids. This is an opportunity for kids to learn. There's interactive things to do. You can just hang out, watch TV. There's snacks, there's drinks. Uh, there's sometimes outdoor sports activities, Wi-Fi, so just kind of a cool place for them to hang out after school and, uh, and be with their friends. I won't get into all the other clubs down there that I've listed that you can read those yourself, but just keep in mind that there are things to do out here for kids. You just kind of have to look around. Um, it's very dependent on volunteers and the size of the area and population of the area, but there are things for kids to do out there. Um, again, I have a pretty good video that goes over a lot of this in detail, as well as the links that'll get you started uh, on all these different clubs and things to do. Okay, plane tickets, Commercial Airline versus Patriot Express. Uh, just know that if you're active duty, Commercial Airlines are only for Patriot Express non-availability. That's people or pets. So in other words, there's only a certain amount of slots that you can take on the Patriot Express. That's for your people or for your pets. If you can't fit in one of those slots, then you're going to need to get an exception to policy an ETP for reimbursement and approval uh, to go on the commercial airline. So let me preface with that. But if you're going commercial airline, you just need to choose the best airline for your needs. Also check the luggage requirements. Uh, this can be reimbursed by the government. However, this is taxable income for some civilians. Um, as far as the different options, you got Sato you can choose from to get plane tickets. I highly recommend US Flights 24. Again, they'll give you 30 euros off, so check them out. Uh, and mention DTV or a travel office using a government purchase card. That's very important. You're using your government purchase card to get your tickets. Um, also, ask for a seat upgrade. Uh, kind of a quick story. When we first moved over here, we thought we were sitting together on the plane, uh, that long flight over to Germany, and it turned out we weren't sitting together. My wife had a panic attack. So when we went to go change our tickets, the lady asked for our IDs, and we pulled out our military ID, and she was super friendly. You know how it is over there in the United States. We are very patriotic over there, so flash that military ID. We ended up getting upgraded to first class, and she actually put us in business class um, because we had two first class tickets that were like away from each other but we had business class tickets that she upgraded us to because we were military and we got to lean back in our chairs the entire way there and had a nice um, TVs and all you know all the other amenities that come with uh, being in business class but anyways the point of this is just to ask for a seat upgrade show them your military ID and see if they uh, see if they'll do it okay the Patriot Express aka the rotator aka cat B flight this is a Department of Defense commercial charter operated by the Air Mobility Command the AMC this is by far the cheapest and most common way to go 
every single Patriot Express flight goes from Baltimore BWI into Ramstein, and then you get on a bus. Uh, and that's how it goes. So there is a two pet max and slots fill up super fast. So you need to get on that immediately. Um, but pets and excess baggage are out of pocket. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can see the luggage requirements down there for the Patriot Express, but there's a lot of big differences, advantages and disadvantages of Patriot Express versus the commercial airline. The number one thing being the Patriot Express is just the cheapest way to go for both humans uh, and for the pets. Again, click on number seven plane tickets, commercial airline versus Patriot Express for my blog post that goes over a lot more detail as well as a testimonial from uh, a bunch of people that actually have been on the Patriot Express and on commercial airline and give their uh, opinions. Okay, shipping your POV, another hot item. You're authorized to ship only one POV uh, from the closest VPC, that's the Vehicle Processing Center. You wanna check the distance beforehand because that can play a big factor on if you're gonna ship your vehicle or not. Sometimes you need to make more than one a trip to that VPC, so just keep that in mind. You need to set up your APO first, that's your military post office box, because you're gonna need to provide a, a shipping notification address when you're, when you're setting all this up. Uh, and then you also need to know if you can actually ship your POV. Uh, if you have a loan, you need to check with your lien holder. You need to uh, make sure that you can actually have insurance overseas and that you can bring that POV over there. So check with that. Also, sometimes the DMV can be funny about license plates when you're going overseas. So uh, look into that at the DMV. Um, and then there's going to be a ton of shipping requirements. Uh, again, check on, um, click on the number eight, shipping your POV. I've got a whole tutorial and a blog post that goes over goes over all the shipping requirements, how to clean it, what you can and cannot bring, etc. Um, and then the driving test. The driving test is something that you can take um, or practice to take before you actually get over here. So get on that. Uh, and then also keep in mind that there's a car in car inspections. That's one of the biggest reasons why you have to go through all these shipping requirements is because when you're in Germany, there's a big car inspection uh, that they have to do before you can put your car on the road. Motorcycles can be shipped with the HHG. See the requirements first. Again, that's in my blog post. Uh, and then selling or storing your POV. You know, there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages. Um, to doing either or. But the biggest thing that you need to take away from this is that you can have a car before you even arrive and that is probably the most ideal setup that you wanna be in. Let's not forget that most people when they arrive probably won't have their POV for the next five to eight weeks. Uh, and rental cars are not reimbursable. Keep that in mind. So how do you avoid that? You can do that through um, buying used cars out here or buying new cars out here. I've got a partnership with some pretty cool um, dealerships, Patriot Military Automobiles uh, for used cars, and they're the, like the largest in Europe and they're in front of every single base, as well as um, Bavarian Motor Cars for new vehicles that you wanna get uh, before coming over here. And again, you can communicate with those folks um, they speak perfect English. They're actually from the UK, so they, they speak proper English. Um, but you can communicate with those folks before you even get arrive over here and have a car when you actually touch down, which is going to be so convenient for you because you're going to be running errands. You're going to be needing to go back and forth to the commissary, to the post office, to the gym, to and from work. You have to go to the school. And you don't want to ask somebody every single time you need to go somewhere to give you a ride. So you really need to think about your options and what you want to do so that you can have a car as fast as you can when you arrive. Number nine, a sponsor. I don't know why the military drops the ball on this one, but this is super important. You need to have a sponsor. This is somebody that you can lean on to ask questions. Ideally, somebody that is in your same uh, job, the same sex, the same family situation, the same rank, um, but that's somebody that you can identify with that can help you out throughout this move. Here are the top 10 things that they should be doing for you. Uh, you need to establish a phone contact. You need to be actually talking to them over the phone, not just email. They need to understand your family needs and how big your family is. Uh, they need to put you in touch with a school liaison if you have kids. They need to be telling you about pets. Uh, they need to be telling you uh, about the APO mailbox and about opening it for you. They're the only ones that can do that for you with your orders. They need to tell you about hotels, flights, transportation. Um, they should show you how to pack. They should be giving you the driver's test information. Um, and they should also perhaps give you a ride to work, maybe to, from the airport. Um, but they need to make the home that you're going to be living in once you arrive uh, a, 
a home sweet home, you know, maybe providing some laundry detergent or some little snacks and knickknacks here and there. Uh, just making you feel comfortable about coming over here to Germany. And then also obviously any work related information uh, that you need. Okay, how to pack. This one can get pretty long, but I'm gonna give you a high level understanding of how to pack and I'm gonna lead you to my blog post and my other video that I have done in detail about all the things you actually need to pack in your suitcase and in these different shipments. There are three shipments, unaccompanied baggage, uh, your household goods, and your personal luggage. Unaccompanied baggage is gonna get there primarily first because it's going by plane. Uh, their household goods will be the next thing that should show up, which goes by boat. And then a personal luggage is all the stuff that you're bringing with you. I would recommend downsizing. Uh, chances are you're coming to a smaller place than you uh, are in the States. Um, you also need to understand that the civilian taxable income, so all of this packing and moving expenses are gonna be stuff for civilians that are going to be taxable income so keep that in mind voltage is also another important item that i go over in my uh, blog post and in my video it's very important to understand when you're bringing over all of your appliances and then organization is key in my opinion to winning this game on on how to pack um, I recommend that you do some home inventory color coding, take a lot of photos, put little tiny nails and junk drawer stuff and remotes uh, into Ziploc bags so you don't lose that stuff. Make sure you put uh, Bluetooth tracking devices in all of these different shipments so you know exactly when this stuff arrives. You can also mail yourself stuff through tote boxes. Um, again, check with your sponsor on that. And then also check with your baggage allowance on your orders. Click on number 10 on how to pack and that's gonna take you into a deeper rabbit hole on everything that you should bring, uh, in my opinion. Temporary lodging allowance, TLA and TLE. So this is just basically allowance that's covering higher than normal lodging during your OCONUS PCS. If you have a report date, then you can go ahead and make a re reservation at TLA, which would, more than likely be uh, the on-base lodging. So you wanna check that availability first. Um, if you're gonna go off post, you're gonna need a statement of non-availability uh, for that reimbursement, and that's for active duty. Um, the payment is based on the per diem rate, and you can see the different rates there below, depending on if you have um, you know, dependents or not. Uh, and then the per diem is covering the lodging, the meals, the incidental expenses, and you wanna keep those receipts. Uh, the TLE and the DLA. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but basically you're gonna get a little bit of TLE, uh, which is allowance when you're in CONUS, I think it's five to seven days, and then once you get OCONUS, that's when your TLA kicks in um, for your different expenses um, on your, your lodging uh, and your meals and whatnot. And again, you're gonna be paying all of this through your government purchase or your travel card. Number 12, setting up your mailbox. This one's quick and easy. There's two ways to send or receive mail. You have your PO box, which is something that your sponsor can help set up before you get over here with your orders. And then you're gonna have a physical German address. Uh, again, like I've been saying, you can mail yourself. Uh, this is tax though, it's non-reimbursable, but uh, you can save yourself some, some weight and mail yourself. You wanna make sure that you check the weight limits. Your sponsor can help you out with that. And then check unauthorized items. You'd be surprised at some of the weird things that are unauthorized, like protein powders and stuff. Um, but again, click on number 12, and I go through a pretty deep tutorial uh, and video of my own post office here at Grafenvir. Um, and it goes over basically all the different ways that you can send and receive mail and how that works um, and how to mail yourself. It, it goes through the whole thing, so check it out. Okay, number 13, housing. This is a popular one. I'd say that most people coming over here to Germany, the first thing they wanna know about is what type of house am I going to be in? And it's a great question. Uh, but you need to know that it's primarily based on the rank, the family size, and the current availability. If you are active duty, you're more than likely gonna be on base. What they're doing right now is uh, giving people two different options to choose from. Their sponsor will take some videos of those places and you'll basically choose it. And then you'll get set up into your home as soon as you uh, you touch down in Germany. If you're civilian, you're more than likely gonna be off post uh, in private housing. And the only way that I know of that active duty can be in off post private housing is if they have a certificate of non-availability. Okay, if you wanna take a look at some homes, of course you do. Uh, you wanna check out buku.com. That'll show you some houses. This is primarily for civilians and off base homes, by the way. Um, and then there's also some apps you can check out. Emo Scout 24 is one of those apps. Emo Velt, which is Emo World. 
and eBay Klein Einzeigen. And then also A House is a military website where you can put in your closest base and it'll show you some of the houses around that area that are available for renting. If you click on number 13, housing at the top, I've also got a huge playlist of homes um, that are on base, off base, that are all over Germany. And as I continue to film uh, around here in Germany, I will continue to add more videos to that playlist. So keep checking that. Um, when you come over here, you will have American and or German rented appliances. You pay a small fee and they give you uh, appliances. Let me take that back. If you're off base, you're gonna rent those appliances. If you're on base, they're probably gonna be in the home already. So you won't have to pay for that. Uh, but you will have loaner furniture and you can choose to keep that or you can get a little bit more comfortable furniture, which I highly recommend. Um, but it is available to you to have while you're waiting for your HHG or your UAB shipment to show up. Uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that you need to be a good neighbor. There's going to be a lot of culture shock things you're going to go through. We'll get to that slide here soon. But at a minimum, some German customs that you need to be aware of. Recycling is not a game over here, so you need to understand how to do that. Shoveling the snow, uh, noise complaints on Sunday, for example. But there's a lot of things that um, I go over in the culture shock slide that you should be aware of when you're moving over here to Germany. Um, also a couple other quick things, self-help. They have, a, uh, most bases have a self-help which has some extra tools and appliances and things that you can use for your home. Uh, UTAP is a program um, when you're command sponsor that you can take advantage of. That's basically a utility tax avoidance program. So if you're paying uh, for rent off base, you can uh, use this UTAP program so that you don't have to pay any taxes on your utilities. Cell phones and internet. When you come over here, you have two options with your cell phone. You can bring your own phone. It needs to be unlocked and you can unlock that with your orders. Uh, you can change or hold or cancel your phone plan uh, with your provider or you can buy a brand new phone and that comes unlocked. But you need to have your phone unlocked because you'll need to have the German SIM card. You'll also need to have a German bank account and that is called an IBAN. It's an international bank account number. It's just like having a uh, checking account number when you open up a bank in the United States. Um, but there's free international calling options out here, such as WhatsApp, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, Talk a Tone. Uh, and there's a lot of options when it comes to your cell phone and data plans out here. A lot of options. So what I did was I teamed up with a company called JDCom Telecommunications. They're partnered by Telecom. Um, and they go over all those different options. No matter where you are stationed in Germany, you can give these guys a call. You can order stuff through them. You can set up your data plans through them. Um, or you can just learn. You know, they speak perfect English. Uh, but take a look at that video uh, and the blog post that has a lot more information on all the different options you have with regards to your cell phone and data. Okay, banking. There are two main options that people choose from here that's very convenient, English speaking. It is Service Credit Union and Community Bank. Those are both located on every single base as well as the military resort Edelweiss here in Garmisch. Okay, here's some things to note about banking overseas in Germany. You don't have to get rid of the bank that you have in the United States, unless your lien holder won't allow you to ship your POV overseas, then it's a different story. For example, I have my main bank accounts and insurance through USAA, but I pay my German house rent and monthly phone bills through Service Credit Union because of that IBAN number that I was talking about. But you don't have to use these banks, the Service Credit Union and the Community Bank, you don't have to use those at all. You'll find that the conversion rates for those banks can be a lot higher than German banks off base, such as Volksbank. Yes, there is a conversion rate or an exchange rate uh, that you need to be aware of because it will affect you when you're taking money out or when you're converting any of your US dollar to Euro or vice versa. Also, one thing to note, one of the reasons why the Service Credit Union and Community Bank uh, exchange rates are higher is because of operating overseas on a US military installation. So because of this, the host nation, Germany and the DOD have come up with a wholesale purchase rate to purchase foreign currency. This rate only applies to the on-base banking and the ATMs. So that wholesale purchase rate is always higher than the standard exchange rate, which is the rate that everyone else off-base most commonly uses. Did I confuse you on that one? Click on number 15, banking, and that'll lead you to an article that explains it a lot better than I can. And then also one thing to note, I mentioned this already about POV title transfers overseas and insurance. Make sure that your bank will be able to do that for you before you move overseas. 
um, that they will allow you to have insurance over in Germany temporarily, and then they'll uh, move over the title transfer um, over there as well. Okay, we're more than halfway done here, so let's keep it moving. Number 16, watching American TV. There's several ways to do this. AFN is probably the most popular choice that people use. Um, it's American Forces Network. It's got about 40 American channels on there for you, including sports. Uh, Easy TV is for streaming a live American TV, and you can find that at all the different exchange PX or BXs on base. A smart TV or an Apple TV, you can use that for streaming to get Netflix and other applications. And then a lot of people are using VPNs these days. It's called a, a virtual private network. And basically that tricks the uh, IP address um, to think that you're in the United States so that you can watch um, specific applications that won't work uh, under geo-restricted smart TVs or Apple TVs such as Hulu, um, but you can also use a Fire Stick or Roku, um, but some of those VPN apps that I'm talking about are ExpressVPN, NordVPN, etc. Driving in Germany. So one thing you need to do before you come over here is renew your stateside driver's license. Make sure that it is up to date. Um, one of the benefits of being overseas is having the USERA license, and you can study that before arriving, and that is essential for on-base driving and rental cars. You can get an international license as well. I actually recommend doing that. However, I have never shown my international license or needed to use my international license, um, but you may need that when driving outside of Germany, just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the driving age here is 18. Most teens, 99.9% .9 of the teens are not driving over here, but there is great public transportation over here. There's shuttle buses that run on the bases. There's also buses that run off base and then public trains. I have a video that goes over exactly how to do that. Uh, for first timers that are riding the train out here. And again, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about the used and new car dealerships that you can work with to get a vehicle before you even arrive here. So that's Patriot Military Automobiles for any used car throughout Germany and Italy. And then take a look at Bavarian Motor Cars. They're also located all over Germany for any of those new cars that you want to get your family inside of. Renter's insurance, this is kind of important. I would not rely on filing a claim through DPS alone. Make sure that you have an up-to-date renter's insurance policy, just in case something goes wrong or something goes missing or something gets damaged uh, in your home that you're at. Uh, you wanna make sure that you back up digital files while you're packing. My wife and I had a discussion before we left on our PCS and we realized that the most important things in our life are all of our digital files, um, all of our pictures, our videos, memories and things that we have. So make sure you back that up um, during the move. And then lastly, just take accountability of your stuff. Ensure the movers are loading and unloading properly. They're using numbered stickers, packing paper, they're stuffing all their boxes, everything's taped shut, crate is sealed, etc. Know your benefits. We talked about this a little bit in the beginning, um, but I'll just go over a quick list here. So your airline tickets, Patriot Express, your pet slots, the insurance claims through DPS, 60 days of TLA, your DLA, your TLE from CONUS to OCONUS. Don't forget about your cost of living allowance and per diem while you're in TLF for your lodging meals and incidentals. Um, all of the shippings, so the HHG, the UAB, and then the storage for NTS one POV shipment and then the motorcycle shipment and the HHG, uh, LQA for your civilians, OHA and MIA, which is your move in housing allowance for military private rentals. Also all the knickknacks and tools and appliances through self-help, all of your SOFA benefits that we talked about in the beginning. And then don't forget about all of your non-reimbursable items uh, such as TCJA, which is all the taxable income, for civilians. However, RITA will offset a lot of those costs. So look into that RITA allowance that you can get. Number 20, voltage. The standard rate in Germany is 220 volts while in the United States, it's 110 volts on all your different appliances. So check those appliances and the cords on them before you come over here. Sometimes it will tell you exactly what the voltage is on the actual cord itself or somewhere on the appliance. Now to get around that, you're gonna need a transformer, which are these big, chunky, heavy things um, that you wanna try to avoid because they eat up a lot of energy or you can use an adapter, which you will see there on the bottom left corner. 
21 and 22 have to do with money. Number 21, save money. We already talked about this before, but you have a lot of non-reimbursable items you need to think of. There's gonna be a lot of miscellaneous moving expenses. You may have a security deposit in your private rental. A lot of people will go from a dual to a single income home because uh, spouse employment over here is kind of an issue. Uh, so think about this type of stuff. I would say anywhere from five to 10K would be a sweet spot especially for civilians. Number 22, cash is king. Germans love their cash and Americans love their card. It's just pretty straightforward. Um, and the coins add up. They've got two Euro coins over here that always add up, um, but they love their cash and coins. So keep in mind that you need to always have cash on you. Uh, don't be angry when you go to a spot and they do not accept card. It's just how it is, especially if you're in one of the smaller areas, rural areas uh, here in Germany, like Hohenfels or Grafenbeer or Vilsack. Uh, ATMs are not everywhere. And when I say not everywhere, I mean like you can't just go to the gas station and there's an ATM. The only thing that is convenient about ATMs are the Euronet and I would try to avoid these at all costs. They are the worst with regards to fees, bank fees, ATM fees. They actually have like a 13 to 15 percent markup and the only reason that I would use those is if there is absolutely no ATM anywhere in sight around me. Um, then I'd use that ATM, but um, yeah, just keep in mind that there aren't a lot of ATMs just hanging out everywhere like you see in the United States. Also, the exchange rate, something to consider when you're taking out large sums of money. Number 23, everyone's favorite, culture shock. This is something that is definitely going to affect you and your family when you move over here. Uh, keep in mind, Germany is more than three times older than the United States. If you look at that picture over there to the right, that is my city of Etzenricht, and this is 750 years old. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of things that they do that you're just not going to understand and it's just because it's a very, very old country and that's the way that they've been raised to do things for a very long time. So there's going to be a little culture shock uh, hurdle that you're going to have to get over. Recycling is going to be a big one. Driving and public transportation is another one like the Autobahn and the different traffic signs uh, and the train system. Home comforts is a big one uh, with all the different concrete walls, these slanted ceilings that you'll see a lot off base, the Rolladen windows, the heatings, and the different sizes uh, of the appliances hours of operation, uh, restaurant etiquette, etc. cetera. Uh, I would go ahead and learn the big ones. Uh, if you click on number 23, Culture Shock, um, in the PDF file, you will get to my Culture Shock uh, blog post and video, and it goes over a bunch of these items. Number 24, join a Facebook group. Don't be afraid to ask your community for help. There are a ton of Facebook groups out there that are super helpful, whether it be for travel or for pets or for PCSing over here. Uh, make sure to use the search feature first. Uh, a lot of times people have already asked the same questions and they've been answered so you can look back into the history and see what the answers have been over time. And then everyone has been there and done that. Keep that in mind. You're not the only one in this boat struggling here. Uh, spouses want to help other spouses, including me. That is a great segue into number 25, spouse employment. This is kind of a hot subject. I would say that jobs are easy to get here, but careers are challenging. I've had several jobs uh, when we first arrived here because we didn't think that we were staying here for that long. So I just took the jobs that came to me. Um, I was a high school basketball coach. I worked at the school a lot. I was a referee. Um, I even worked at the shoe store on base. Um, I just wanted a job to make a little extra cash. Um, some of the resources to find that are USA Jobs. You can also get into home-based businesses, which have some funky rules that you need to pay attention to. Um, but keep in mind that time is on your side, and that really never happens. Uh, if you're a civilian, you get about five years here. If you are active duty, you got about three years here. So think about what you want to do within that time. If you want to get involved with those passion projects that you never got around to when you're in the States, or you want to learn new skills, or you want to volunteer, well, there's always an opportunity to volunteer. And that may open the door to another career or job that you weren't even thinking of um, just by volunteering. You can also get back into school, get a degree, get a certification. Um, but there's, there's many options. Um, but that also leads into childcare. So uh, again, 
try to get with CDC as, as soon as you can because obviously if you're going to be working, you're going to need to have child care. Um, and so I would get on that as soon as you know that you're coming over to the base and see what the waiting list is all about. Number 26, travel. I don't know why I waited so long to put this on the list. I can talk about this forever. It's the number one reason why we are all here, is it not? We want to make those memories because time will fly when you get here. So this is what I'll say. Make some travel goals before you get here or right when you arrive. I would start local, get to know your local town, your local butcher, your local grocery store, your local shops, and then go big. Your family back home in the States are gonna wanna take advantage of the fact that you're here in Germany, so bring your family overseas. Again, I would check out US Flights 24 for the cheapest military discounted airfare. Um, take a look at my DTV video blogs, my ultimate Europe travel guide. I even have a military travel guide um, that you should take advantage of where I've listed like all of the family friendly locations on a Google map to show you where you can go and what you can do and I'm always doing travel videos because I think it's super important I think that everybody should be traveling while you're out here um, not to mention I've also got uh, information on how to use the train the bus uh, how to use cheap flights through Ryanair oh and speaking of bus how can I forget Euro trip adventures you need to write this down if you're coming over here looking for cheap travel and don't mind being on a bus, you need to invest your time into this company. They have pickup locations in Grafenvir, K-Town, and all over Germany, and they go just about everywhere in Europe. I actually started my DTV career creating promotional videos for this company, so I can definitely vouch for them. I mean, I've been on a ridiculous amount of trips with them. Paris, Disneyland Paris, Innsbruck, Austria, Liechtenstein, Belgium, ooh, Lake Bled in Ljubljana and Slovenia, oh my goodness, gorgeous. Uh, Slovakia, Amsterdam, the Tulip Field, Switzerland. Um, I've even been on a cruise with them to see the Baltic countries like uh, Sweden and Estonia, Finland, and even Russia. Listen, I'm really not trying to brag here. This is just one of many ways to get all over Europe. And it is so easy out here. Just get on a bus, get comfy, and let them take you where you wanna go. Um, I'll put the links in the description and in the PDF that can show you a lot more. Now, with regards to my travel products, click on number 26 and that'll take you to all of my guides as well as a travel goal sheet that I've already put together that you can start filling in. Ladies and gentlemen, we made it to the last slide, number 27, airport transportation. If you're on the Patriot Express, that'll fly into Ramstein and then you'll take a bus to your next duty station. It's not very enjoyable. You're gonna be very tired. And your pets, unfortunately, have to go underneath the bus uh, per German law. Uh, if you're going commercial airline, then call your sponsor and see if they'll pick you up. Bribe them if you have to. Um, but you wanna get a, somebody to pick you up from the closest airport. Number 28, a newcomer's brief. When you get to the base, you're more than likely gonna to go to a newcomer's brief that's gonna go over more or less all the stuff that I just went over with you today. Um, but uh, just to be aware that that'll happen, you'll have an introduction to the base. Um, and there may be an online version, so check the base that you're going to and see if they have an online version. Number 29, free Wi-Fi. Usually you won't have internet when you arrive, and it's going to be a little difficult to figure out where you're going to get data. Uh, if you're trying to figure that out, some of the places that I like to go to uh, for free Wi-Fi on base, Army Lodging, uh, the library, the USO, and or the Teen Center. Check those out. And the last one, number 30, learning German. So, wir haben in Deutschland für acht Jahre gewohnt und mein Deutsch ist nicht, nicht schlecht. So, this is what I will say about German. Don't expect to be fluent. You're only here for a couple years. I wouldn't expect to be fluent. I would just learn the basics. And this is exactly what I did. So, the first thing I did when I first got, when I first arrived was I learned the numbers, the colors, the phrases, and greetings. And I was literally just learning this in my hotel before I even had any of my stuff or my house or anything. Then what I did was once I got into my home, I used post-it notes literally everywhere, all over the house. I would put post-it notes everywhere so that even if I'm not trying to study, uh, my mind is just reading what I see all the time. Kind of like when you read subtitles um, when they come up on a movie and it's, you, your brain just starts reading it because it pops up on the screen. So th that's also a second thing that I did was I use subtitles for everything that I watched. So I put um, everything in German subtitles when I'm watching TV and then sometimes I would watch movies that I'm very, very familiar with, like Disney movies, and I would turn them, uh, I would switch the language to German and have English subtitles. So that helped quite a bit. 
And then I also took advantage of pretty much any class that I can get my hands on, whether it be a virtual class, whether it be face to face, um, whether I had a private tutor, I've done it all. And that got me a pretty good base of the basics. Um, enough for me to be confident in speaking and ordering food and having a basic conversation with people out here in Germany. Well, if you made it that far into this presentation, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the channel. I hope you've learned something today. I hope I brought you some value. If you have questions, obviously I cannot answer them right now, but be on the lookout for my live webinars. That's something that I definitely want to start doing here pretty soon. I also want to bring some of the businesses and uh, local affiliates that I've been talking about within the presentation so they can answer some of uh, your questions such as uh, you know buying a new or used car um, before you arrive over here. So yeah, stay tuned for updates on the live webinar or hit subscribe for new weekly content. I'm always publishing new content for you. Once again, thank you so much for coming. I look forward to seeing you guys over here in Germany and I will catch you in the next one.